Hi, it's time to talk about one of the handiest bits of test gear you can have in any lab. It's a decade resistance box. Now this particular one I've got from IET Labs is the RS201W. It's a nine decade box, you can tell because it's got uh, nine uh, different switches on there from zero to nine, so it's called a nine decade box. It goes from 0.1 ohms up to uh, 100 mega ohms, 0.1% uh, basic tolerance and uses uh, thumb wheel switches instead of the instead of the traditional style uh, rotary ones. Really quite nice. Not exactly the hobbyist affordable level though. It's uh, 539 US bucks. <laughs> Woohoo! Okay, but they're supposed to be pretty darn good quality, manufactured with top quality parts, and we'll get into that. And uh, uh, you can get uh, cheaper ones from starting from $174, but yeah, not quite the do-it-yourself hobby level. But anyway, I think it's very nice. And here it is. It's a nice, small, compact unit. I rather like it. But you can get that using these uh, thumb wheel switches. You can actually uh, manufacture quite a small unit. There's going to be a bit of uh, dead space inside this thing, but it's, you know, generally speaking, it is a very small nine-decade resistance box i love it nice tough tough uh, poly carbonate case by the looks of it and uh it's got two standard four millimeter banana terminals on here a binding post and uh it's nine decades and we can dial in any value up to here it is 99.9999999 mega ohms crazy now this one is actually uh, calibrated, so it comes with a calibration certificate. That's an extra 74 bucks if you want to get it uh, calibrated, but uh, they give you a full test report we'll take a look at. And uh, here's the um, specs uh, from zero to uh, basically 99.9 uh, uh, mega ohms. As we said in 0.1 ohm uh, steps, it's a uh, 0.5 watt uh, rating so each resistor inside will be 0.5 watts but because they're in series um, that will actually uh, rise up to a maximum of 2.5 watts um, if you actually dial it in to uh, a value of 9 basically and the accuracy is uh, plus minus 0.1 percent plus 0.036 ohms because it will have when you dial in zero it will have that fixed uh, offset value there so it's nice that they've actually included that um, and if and but that accuracy only applies if you're between uh, 9 ohms and uh, 10 mega ohms if you're outside of that it's going to be plus minus 0.2 percent instead of uh, 0.1 and the zero resistance is less than uh, 0.5 ohms but it's up manufactured by IET labs I haven't looked at any of their gear before but uh, based on outside it's quite nice and the best part it's about taking anything apart is, of course, breaking the calibration seal. <laughs> Recalibrate if seal broken my ass. Let's crack this thing open. And here we go. Let's have a look inside. Ta-da! Thumb wheel switches. <laughs> no surprises there whatsoever. That's exactly what I expected. A whole bunch of, uh, whole bunch of precision resistors mounted on the thumb wheel switches. Now, if you take a look, there's only five resistors per decade and that's not what I was expecting at all. Uh, I was expecting the more traditional uh, 10 resistors per decade and having a 10 position thumb wheel switch but they haven't. They've gone for the reduced resistor count here and uh, I you know I don't know why they've actually done that it's rather curious I guess it's uh, you know it's simpler it takes up uh, less room and when you're custom designing um, these switches if you're getting them custom made well why not uh, actually reduce your resistor count it's not a problem so they've obviously gone in a configuration of um, like a one and then two 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 so if you add them all up two four six eight and then nine so you can dial in any value from uh, zero to nine and that's what the values in there look like if you read the resistor color codes in there um, they've gone for the one two 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 arrangement with um, some sort of you know um, multi-pole uh, switch arrangement inside the thumb wheel switches now here's the switch for the 0.1 ohm uh, decade. As you can see, they haven't used traditional axial resistors as they as they have on the other decades here. They've used uh, they've used a resistance uh, wire here, and you can see they're slightly different lengths. Getting down, well, they're, they're, these are all the same because it's two, 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 and then that one down there is a different is a shorter length or half the length 
of the other one. So they've just uh, tweaked those to get their uh, 0.1 ohms. I'm not sure uh, why they've done that instead of using a precision through hole resistor. Who knows? Now I really don't like this at all. Look, they've bodged on. I don't know why. They've used, you know, nice formed uh, leads on the resistors here. And this one has just been bodged and hack soldered. It, it, like, it's like they actually broke the lead on it or something. And they extended it with a crappy bit of wire. I don't know what's going on with there. That's, that's really unacceptable. I don't like it. And on the uh, 10 meg ohm decode range here, of course, they've got a single 10 meg resistor there on the back. And then to get their 20 megs, instead of uh, using a 20 meg resistor, you know, buying a custom 20 meg resistor, they've just whacked two of them in series. Uh, granted, they're, you know, they've twisted the leads here and they've soldered them, you know, no, no problems at all. But, gee, I don't know, why couldn't they just order a bunch of uh, 20 meg resistors to order? I don't know. And you can see that these are actually uh, as switches custom made by or for IET Labs uh, Inc. And I actually uh, confirmed that with them, and they do say that they are that they are actually uh, custom designed, top quality uh, switches specifically made uh, for them. To the, they basically claim that they are the most uh, one of the most reliable thumb wall switches uh, on the market. Got extra thick gold plating inside, designed for ultra low contact resistance over age and stuff like that. And well, that's what you'd expect in a um, you know in a in a in sort of a professional level uh, decade resistance box that cost uh, many hundreds of dollars. You'd at least expect uh, custom switches like that. And pretty much uh, that's what it comes down to is the reliability of the switches in these things because the actual resistors themselves they don't age too much although they do say IET labs do uh, say that they do use uh, custom uh, precision resistors in here designed for long term long term stability they're 25 uh, ppm so they're not setting the world alight there that's uh, pretty standard but um, they do actually manufacture these things for long-term reliability. So the bottom line is if you go uh, buy those thumb wheel switches, you can get, you know, 10 for 10 bucks on eBay or something like that from the One Hung Lo factory in China. Well, they're, I, you know, they might work um, first go, but in five or 10 years time, they're probably not going to be uh, working as well as these ones will. And here's the back of the... Uh, switches here and uh, as you, you know it's it's fairly simple all this all the stuff happens inside the switch of course all the uh, complicated multipole uh, switching arrangements so that you can actually use uh, f five resistors instead of uh, ten and um, uh, basically this is the highest this is the 10 mega ohm position and look the other ones are soldered just fine but this particular one has solder and there's flux residue left over between the contacts and well that's not what you want to see on the, especially on the 10 mega ohm range. It's not going to matter right down in the ohms range down here, but when you're up at 10 megs, stuff like that uh, might matter. And of course, I wouldn't be happy unless I uh, at least attempted to uh, uh, crack one of them open. But they are um, heat uh, staked in there, so I won't actually uh, physically. Um, cut those out, but uh, as you can see that looks like the uh, model number there of the uh, of the particular switch in there and they are um, IET uh, Lab uh, IET Labs branded again. There we go on the side there and uh, you can see the Contacts in there and they look like uh, dual wipe ones. It's going to be really hard to See in there, but uh, that would be a uh, really thick high quality uh, gold plating with uh, very uh, top quality uh, dual wipe contacts, I'm sure. So you might think 500 bucks for a box like this is fairly expensive and well, you know, if you're an individual, uh, it is. You can make one yourself for a lot cheaper, but you know, if you use top quality uh, thumb wheel switches and they cost you, you know, 10, 20 bucks each, not the cheap one hung low ones, and you've got, uh, you know, nine, almost 10 decades there, you know, that could add up to a couple of hundred bucks right there just for uh, good quality uh, switches. So, you know, you have to look at that aspect of it really. But yeah, apart from that, um, I'm quite disappointed by a few, um, you know, bodgy aspects of the construction inside this, you know, a bit of residue left over. They're using the, um, you know, two series resistors down here. They should just cut it to one and that bodge solder joint there. I don't know what's going on, but I have no doubt though um, that this will um, be 
a uh, quite a stable box over a long period of time. And uh, the IET uh, ones are quite well uh, actually proven in the industry. So I have no doubt it's uh, going to work out quite well and will be stable for quite a long time. Let's do a quick little check on this thing, shall we? Now, I'm using the Agilent U1272A today because it's got a 1 milliohm resolution on ohms, and that's excellent. So let's uh, zero the leads out here, and uh, there we go, 0.37, that'll do. And we'll null that out. There we go, and uh, let's see if we can measure the box on all zeros here. What, what do we get? And bingo, 0.36. One and of course that is uh, well under the claimed uh, 0.5 ohms zero resistance there and uh, as I said you know in five or ten years time I'd, I'd expect this still to have uh, a pretty good uh, close tolerance on the uh, low ohms there nice stability and you know it doesn't have dodgy contacts and things like that so I'd expect it to be reasonably reliable and let's just dial it up here we've got 0.36 ah. Uh, 367 there, let's dial it up by 1 ohm. 1.365, so there you go, bang, it goes up, and then that one's going to go up by 0.1 each time. Now, that's a disadvantage with these boxes, that you've got 0.1 ohms, you know, you're down into the switch uh, contact resistance and the wiring and solder joints and stuff like that. So, you know, really, you know, your absolute accuracy down at your 0.1 ohms is not that great, but your resolution, as you can see, if you put in say uh, 10 ohms, it's going to go up by 0.1. There it is. 3, 6, 2, 4, 6. Bang. And if we dial in our 1K there, then the um, 0.1 ohms here actually represents the least significant digit. So let's dial that up. Bang. It goes, yep. There we go. 0. 1 ohms resolution, not a problem. So even though the accuracy at uh, 1K, at the accuracy of 0.1% uh, uh, at 1K here is only uh, this uh, particular uh, digit here, the uh, third uh, digit there, we can get greater resolution to that. And we talked about that before, the difference between accuracy and resolution. They're two entirely different concepts. Now I'll just check for uh, dicky switches here. If you go along and you sort of give them a give them a little flick and a little bit of a wobble, does it uh, does it change? And no, because you'd expect uh, those switches to have you know good quality uh, spring contacts in them that uh, actually retain a good low resistance over the range. And if I wiggle that one back and forth just a little bit then it doesn't change at all unless we actually flick it over, bang, to the next one. Now, if we put it smack in the middle there, bang, it's jumped up to 9K, as you can see. So going from 0 to 0 ohms to 1 here, switching to 1, it's actually switched to 9K in the middle there. So just be wary of that, that when you're switching uh, uh, well, this particular box, because of the switch arrangement used, um, if you're, you know, your circuit might suddenly jump for a little bit there, for a split second, could jump from 1K to 9K. It's not going to jump from 0, or let's say from 1. Let's go 1K, and let's try and jump to, bang, there we go. It jumps to 9K before it jumps to 2K. Something to be aware of if you're doing your circuit and you suddenly see a spike or something like that, because these things, uh, some of them with the um, the traditional 10 resistors per decade, they may actually uh, break before they make the next uh, contact. If they've got what's called break before make uh, rotary switches in there, then your uh, whole decade resistance box will become open for a split second as it switches to the next one. And if you're using your circuit live and switching in resistors like this and dialing them up, just be aware of that. If you suddenly see some sort of impulse in your circuit, you know that uh, you know it's not that exact value until it's actually um, dialed right in like that. If it's halfway between, you could be in big trouble. There it is, 9K again. And let's check out the 10 meg value here. There we go, <laughs> pretty spot on according to the uh, Agilent. I can't remember the Agilent's uh, spec on uh, this range uh, right off the top of my head, but uh, there you go. It can uh, measure up to 99. 
Nine, no problems at all. Now, ordinarily though, you wouldn't need this sort of uh, range, you know, from uh, this nine decade one is, you know, amazing. From 0.1 ohms up to, you know, 100 uh, meg ohms, that's really outside of the, you know, the normal range that you would need for just a general purpose uh, decade box. So you're gilding the lily a bit there. You really only need just the uh, $174 one that goes from uh, one ohm up to 10 meg. It's, it's only got uh, seven uh, decades. Much, uh, you know, it's much cheaper, much more usable. Granted, it's only 1% instead of 0.1%, uh, but, you know, once again, you may not need 0.1% uh, either. So, but if you're building your own, 1% uh, one, 1 resistors and a seven, six or seven decade unit, not a problem at all. And for the 74 bucks extra, you can get your cow certificate with your decade resistance box. And well, you know, I mean, do you need a cow certificate for your decade resistance box? Well, some people might. Anyway, it's got uh, all the individual uh, marked values here for all the ranges. And if we have a look at, say, the middle of the range 1K uh, range here, you know, it's it's uh, out by an absolute um, uh, percentage error, you know, 0 0.06, 0 0.08, you know, 0 0.05, 0 0.01 there in the middle, you know, 0 0.0075. It's, you know, it's um under, you know, there's there's one range there which is close to its 0.1% uh, tolerance range, but of course uh, they were all going to pass. They wouldn't sell it to you if it didn't uh, meet its uh, absolute uh, spec of 0.1%. But as you can see, a good majority of these uh, figures are, you know, around the uh, 0 0.01, 0 0.02 uh, range. So, you know, it's it's pretty good. But that's uh, that's what you'd expect. You wouldn't expect them to actually, or a good majority of them, to be close to the 0.1% tolerance. And of course, if you're building your own box like this, you can actually uh, hand match resistors as well, which we'll go into later but uh, they i don't know if they've hand selected the the resistors that went into this or whether they just uh, uh you know take them direct from the manufacturer as a random uh batch or not but yeah it's um certainly well within spec not a problem at all even up on the uh 10 meg range up here right where we're still only talking look 0.05 percent you know it's it's not too bad at all 0.02 and uh on the meg ohm range here 0 0.02 0 0.01 Pretty darn good. And of course, as we mentioned down on the milliohm, hundreds of milliohm range here, you know, your percentage errors are quite uh, a fair bit larger, you know, 3% down at 0.1 and, you know, minus one and, well, that one's way spot on. There we go. Brilliant. Uh, but, you know, plus minus 1%, 2%, 3%, those sort of figures down there. And then once you jump down to the, you know, ohms range, they start to jump uh, back towards the 0.1% uh, uh, end of the spectrum. And then they get better from there because their um, figures were quoted from 10 ohms up, if you remember the figure on here it tells you from you know um, from uh, 10 ohms to 10 meg is where it meets that uh, 0.1 percent and sure enough it jumps straight down to the um, 0.1 percent or lower on that range so they've got a whole bunch of different models in the IET range they've got the you know from 174 bucks up to 800 and $47. Uh, they've got uh, either um, a half watt, which is the box we've got here, or they've got the uh, two watt uh, ones. This is the particular model, the RS201 we've got here, 539 bucks. Um, but the cheapest one is 174 at 0.1% or it jumps up to 324 if you want the 0.1%. Oh, it's a bit rough, but these aren't designed for the individual hobbyist, really. So they're sort of professional prices. What do you expect? Um, they do capacitance boxes as well as inductance boxes. Um, a capacitance box is really handy, by the way, if you want to buy one or make one. Highly recommend it. Inductance box, not as handy as the capacitance box, but some people do actually make them and uh, need them. And overall, it's it's quite a nice box. I really like it. Um, and just a few dodgy uh, construction things inside they need to fix up. Why do I always end up with the boxes that have problems? I don't know. The curse of the EEV blog. Anyway, I rather like it. So if you can afford it, I recommend you pick one up. See ya.